carried. Thank you very much. So then moving on to the next report, which is the planning consent report for um, resource consents for March, April and May, item 22. Um, welcome to the table. So these are reports that normally, of course, would have come to the committee, which are now coming to, to council. So we've got a presentation here as well, so all yours. Thank you. Yes, there's a report which we'll take as um, read, and really we've got a presentation that's, that's focused on the um, timeframes and backlogs to do with resource consenting at the moment. So we'll just get into that. So next slide, please. Um, so this is just a bit of um, context around the application numbers um, we're receiving at the moment and you would have seen what building consents are, are receiving and we're not that dissimilar. And you'll see into the, this is an annual um, number and you'll see as you know this year that we've had um, the highest uh, numbers ever recorded. So this is a record year for Christchurch. Um, which is good in a way. It shows there's a lot of development that's um, going on, but it's, uh, it's created an issue for us in terms of keeping on top of the workloads. Um, what we've also seen um, is an increased complexity, particularly with the multi-unit development. And um, they're more difficult to process for us, but we, um, we also get tied up in a lot of neighbour um, issues with those developments as well. So that takes us a lot of time to deal with. Um, and then I've just noted that there's, uh, we've had this um, external environment going on where we've had uh, high staff turnover, so a lot of people going to MFE. Um, MFE have increased their Christchurch office from what I recall two or three people in Christchurch to about 70 people now. So um, they've had to get the, a lot of those people from the local sort of planning community in Christchurch, some of them from, Christ, um, from Christchurch City Council. And then, of course, we've had COVID um, as well. So we're seeing increased um, sickness, which reduces our, um, our capacity to process consents. And um, something you see in there in the numbers, you can see our numbers are quite lumpy. So they're not consistent year to year. They're up one year, down the next. So um, we resource to a sort of a certain level, and then we rely on consultant capacity to um, process the overflow. But what we've experienced this time, and it's quite unique, and it was different to what happened after the earthquakes as well, that uh, there's been pretty much n no consultant uh, availability. So we haven't been able to call on that. Um, so that's been a real problem for us where we would have normally had quite a lot going out to them. Um, we've had low numbers going out to them um, until recently. So next slide, and I'll hand over to Paul for the next slide. Cheers. Um, well, obviously, all that means uh, some applications aren't being processed on time um, for the uh, year ending uh, at the end of May. 76% uh, of applications uh, were processed within statutory timeframes. Um, so that's 24% you know, um, out of time. Um, a lot of that has been felt in the latter half of the financial year. Um, so we were doing quite well last year leading into Christmas um, and then you know uh, gradually this year um, our turnaround of applications is slowed uh, so for the month of May 60% uh, of applications were processed within statutory time frames um, yeah that largely came down to um, quite a, a rush of applications uh, before the Christmas holidays uh, and those numbers uh, continued to climb uh, particularly in February and March, uh, which I think were our biggest months uh, of the last 12, 12 months for applications lodged. Next slide. So um, what have we been doing to get on top of the backlog? Um, we've had lots of, um, lots of sessions trying to plan what we can do to get onto the backlog because we're conscious the delays um, have major impact on our customers. Um, so we, we really want to get on to top of that as quickly as possible. So just note some of the things that we've been doing, recruitment, consultants where we can, overtime for staff, and um, streamlining processes. So um, we're trying to shift to a, a risk management approach for processing. So um, we're spending less time on the simple applications and more time on the complex applications where that time is needed. Um, another thing that we've done recently is particularly in the subdivision space, so we've created a subdivisions focused team and we're trying to really get on top of the, the subdivision process because there's a few more 
parts to the process, a few more moving parts to that process. So um, we're putting a bit, dedicating a bit of extra resource and effort. Uh, we're also um, employed more people because um, recruitment's been difficult at the planning level because there's been competition for planners. So we've started to employ planning technicians um, who aren't qualified planners, but um, if we can get smart people on board, they can do things like 2D3s, 2D4s for um, subdivisions and a lot of that sort of supportive technical administrative work, which is um, quite helpful to the overall process. Um, we've been prioritising applications where we can. Um, you know, there's um, some quite difficult circumstances out there for people, so we've been taking that on board and trying to sort of um, address them when we can. Even Paul and, and I have been processing the odd application where, where people are desperate. Um, and as a result of what we're doing, we're, we're not seeing um, complaints as high as what we'd expect with our compliance of the timeframes. Um, I noted there uh, the annual survey um, has been 70, it was up to 76%, which was actually a 6% increase in customer satisfaction. And then with every application, we send out a um, pulse sur uh, uh, survey with that application decision and ap um, applicants can, can lodge it back. And I'm just saying there, for the last three months, it's been 100% satisfaction for all those um, surveys that have been returned. It's not a high number, but um, people do have that opportunity to give us that feedback, and that's what's come back. Um, one area that we've put a lot of effort into is increasing communication with applicants. Um, so the expectations are being managed around um, when they might uh, get their decision and various steps along the process. So um, we think that's helped a lot as well. Next slide. Okay. Um, so when will we get back on top of the, the backlog? Well, we're starting to see signs uh, of improvement now. Um, a, a major um, coup uh, in recent weeks is that we've managed to get a consultancy on board to process 240 applications over a 12-week period, um, which will make a, a significant difference. Um, applications are still relatively you know, quite high uh, compared to other years, but they are starting to slow down slightly. Um, so we're now starting to get to a situation where we're processing more than we're receiving, and we've largely done that under the, you know, the steam of our own own staff. Um, uh, so the consultants, you know, any consultant capacity that's added into that is going to make a really big difference. Um, the recruitment market is starting to improve. Um, we've been able to uh, employ a few more people uh, in recent months to um, fill backfill spaces, uh, and that's been quite promising. Um, yeah, and, and I guess we're starting to see uh, some gradual improvements now, um, and we're expecting, um, you know, probably by the end of end of this year, early next year, to be substantively on top of the problem. That, that's the end of the presentation, so we're, we're happy to take questions. All chat. right, so once again, let's move to any questions, if indeed there are any. Phil. Yeah, the one I asked before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have to send um, a, a resource consent to the airport as part of the law, so to speak, or is yeah. it one of our rules? Yeah, um, it's one of the rules in the district plan that says... Um, written approval has to be attained by the, um, from the airport. Mm -hmm. um, what we've been doing in recent times, we've been meeting with the airport, trying to narrow down what, they want to uh, what rule breaches they want to see and what applications they want to see. So we've got a, um, a practice note now that starts to detail the various types of applications because the way the rule is worded, it captures a whole lot. And, for mm -hmm. example, a swimming pool. Um, it's, it's not something the airport wants to see or need to see. So... Mm -hmm. We're narrowing down the applications that they, they get, even though um, the district plan says there's a legal obligation to get written approval from them. Mm -hmm. We've got implicit written approval from them for certain rule breaches. Okay, so just sort of following on from what, what um, Sam was asking before yep. to Mark, is, can, is there anything we can do to change it so it makes it easier for you? Do, not, don't have to tell me now, but I'm just yeah. going um, forward. 
plan change is the obvious one. Mm -hmm. um, we've done um, worked with the airport and done what we can within the rules, mm -hmm. and I think that's made um, a significant improvement to mm -hmm. having to liaise with the airport over <coughs> issues that don't need to be liaised with them over. Mm -hmm. um, but beside, um, aside from that, it's a change to the district plan. Okay, and and sorry, one other Andrew. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. If you uh, are doing a building site and you take away more than ten cubic meters of material need or resource consent, yep. you take it away. If ninety nine percent of the subdivision work on, of the new builds that you're getting are on subdivisions that have been cleaned within an inch of their life of contamination, they've all got ticks. Yep. If we raise that to 50 cubic metres, would that save a lot of work for you? Yes, it would. And it is something that um, we've, um, we're have we talking to our district plan team around mm -hmm. as well. Great. So it is, uh, we agree with you. There are some um, earthworks that are triggering for quite low amounts and they don't need to, particularly on the flat. Mm, absolutely. Um, mm. So yes, we're on the same page there. Great, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Tim. When are we next looking at um, district plan changes within these? Because those two seem that obvious that we can put up and change. It would be logical yeah. to. One would have no problem. The other one, I believe, wouldn't either. Yeah, so um, Mark Stevenson was talking to you before and he mentioned that we were intending to bring a sort of plan change priority list to you at some stage. Um, and that will be an opportunity because there's a lot of things yep. um, and we can only do so many of them. Mm. So... <laughs> But there's only capacity um, and budget to do so yeah, much. Yeah. So we, we, we have to prioritise what we're going to do in terms of district plan changes. So Mark will be bringing yeah. that list to you and um, we can have a good discussion about what are the priorities. So on the, that list, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'd imagine that, the, for instance, the swimming pool one would be so straightforward that you'd kind of slide in without any problem. It, with, it's not, well, no, it, it goes mean, through a public process and um, the airport could could have a, a view on on that so it will there will be some work required there okay cool. i mean i think they agree with us on certain things but yeah. it, it might be an opportunity to look at other things as well yep yeah thank you all right no further questions so sam will move and phil will second okay thank you very much is there any discussion all those in favor say aye, aye. against aye. Okay. that's carried thank you Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So that now brings us to item 25. The